Hi there, in this video I just wanted to talk briefly about the sort of importance of the central limit theorem and um, why it's such an important result within um, statistics and econometrics. So what's the idea of the central limit theorem? Well the idea is that if I have some sort of population and I take um, repeated samples from that population, sort of S1, S2, all the way through to sort of um, Sn, where n is sort of quite a big number, so I've taken loads and loads of different um, samples from that population, then if for each of those samples I then calculate um, the sample mean, so that would be sort of x bar 1, x bar 2, x bar n in general, right? And if I calculate different, um, if I calculate the sample mean for each of those different um, samples from my population, then independent of my sort of original population distribution, the central limit theorem says that our sort of frequency distribution of our um, x bar is going to be normally distributed around the sort of true population mean mu. So we have a sort of frequency distribution which looks something like this. So why is this so powerful in um, statistics and econometrics? Well, it's because it doesn't matter what population um, distribution we have. If we have a normally distributed population, then the sample mean is um, going to similarly follow a normal distribution. However, if we have a Poisson distribution of variables in our population, then our sample mean is also going to be norm normally distributed. Or another example being that, let's say we have a sort of uniformly distributed x in our population. Then it, it turns out that our sample means from that population are also asymptotically normal. So it's completely unrestricted in terms of um, the sort of original population distribution. If I am taking a random sample of, of observations from that population, then it turns out that independent of that population um, distribution, then my sample mean is going to follow some sort of normal distribution like we've sort of got on here on the right, uh, under the assumption that I've taken um, a sort of large number of samples from that distribution. So I'm not going to go ahead and prove the central limit theorem in this um, video, but what I'm going to do is talk about a particular example and sort of try to provide some intuition as to why the central limit theorem is, is true. So my um, x values can take on any value between 0 and 1, and the sort of PDF looks something like this. Okay, so why is it the case that if I calculate the sample mean, it happens to be um, normally distributed? Or if I calculate the sample mean um, an arbitrary number of times, why does it seem to be the case that I tend to get something, uh, a sort of frequency distribution which looks normally distributed? Well, let's first of all think about what we sort of expect the value of um, x to be given our sort of population process. Well, if we didn't have any other information, then our sort of best guess at what the value of x we would get from sort of taking one sample from that population or one individual from that population would be a value of 0.5. So let's think about if we took two individuals in that population and then we added together their sort of two um, values of x. So this could be their heights, for example. And then we divided that by two. So we're sort of calculating the um, mean of that sample. Well, if you think about the number of different ways that we could get um, a value of x bar equal to 0 0.5, there are quite a few different ways, right? It, I could have got um, both of my values of x1 and x2 pretty close to 0 0.5. And then the mean would be 0 0.5. Or alternatively, I could have got a value of um, x1 equal to 0.25 and a value of x2 equal to 0.75. And that would also have a mean of uh, 0.5. So, and I hope you can see that I could sort of generalize that sort of infinitely many times. And there are sort of all these different ways I can get a value of x bar equal to 0.5. But let's think about how likely it is that I would have got a value of x bar, let's say, equal to uh, or less than or equal to 0.1, right? So how many different ways can I get a value of x bar less than or equal to 0.1? Well, I'm quite restricted. If I'm to get a mean of my observations equal to 0.1, and then both of my observations have to be essentially uh, pretty near to 0.1. I mean, I could have had one of my observations coming out at zero and the other one coming out at 0.2, but 
but they both have to be pretty small, right? So there are, I hope you can see that there are a fewer ways basically that we can get a value of X bar, which is really, really small. Similarly, there are fewer ways that we can get a value of X bar, which is really high. So if we get a value of X bar, which is sort of 0.9 or above, in order to get a value of X bar equal to 0.9, well, that means that both of my observations have to be between 0.8 and, and 1, essentially. Because if they weren't, then the value of X bar would be less than 0.9. So I hope you can see that there are far fewer ways that we can get sort of any extreme value of X bar than there are um, ways in which we can get a value of X bar which is close to the middle, 0.5. And actually, it turns out that if you were to take sort of arbitrary many samples um, from this population and for each of those samples calculate the sample mean, then they would sort of actually be uh, normally distributed around 0.5. And the normal distribution happens to be the actual way in which we summarize the sort of relative likelihood of getting a value of 0.5 opposed to getting a value of, let's say, 0.1 or a value of 0.9. So I hope you can see for the case of a, a uniform distribution that when we are taking the sample mean um, for all the different samples which we take from our population, it's sort of, at least qualitatively, you can see how that we might have got a sort of normal distribution of our sampling mean for that case. So it turns out that the power of the central limit theorem is the fact that we can generalize this to other PDFs other than the sort of uniformly distributed X, for example. Um, it's completely independent of the PDF, in fact. Um, if I calculate the sample mean for my sample, then it turns out that independent of that population PDF, the sample mean will be at least asymptotically normally distributed around the true mean, mu, or in this case, the value of 0.5. And the central limit theorem is going to play a role in forming a lot of our econometric test statistics, which we're going to cover in future videos.